Hey everybody, welcome to our brief overview of ESRM 492, our service learning in New Orleans class, class we've been doing almost consistently for about 15 years. The only break we've had is, is due the, uh, a couple years due to the pandemic. So very proud of this class, super, super awesome. I love everybody to join us uh, in New Orleans this spring if you can. Um, our group is, uh, while we're based here in, in uh, CSUCI, and obviously you, you all are CSUCI students, um, we have folks uh, that are involved with this course from all over the place, principally John Lambrinos from Oregon State, Tom Huggins from UCLA, and Katie Braystead from Woodlands Conservancy in New Orleans. We have all kinds of collaborators that we've acquired over the years, they include um, groups like Katie's Woodlands Conservancy Group, um, a group called Capstone and the Lower Ninth Ward, and all kinds of, of partners um, throughout southern Louisiana. This class was born out of Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina struck just after classes started in 2005, um, and it was hugely impactful. It's hard to explain uh, to you all how impactful it was. We had students here uh, jo uh, join us here at CSUCI um, who were evacuated from um, Louisiana, uh, et cetera. Uh, all of your predecessors got together and did a bunch of fundraising, and um, a couple months after that happened, donated a huge check to the Red Cross, and then my students turned to me and said, okay, Dr. A, you said the first thing to do is send money after these disasters, and we did that. But now we want to lend our backs. Now we want to help out. And you know about wetlands and you know about Louisiana, so you should take us to Louisiana. And I was like, whoa, what are you talking about? Um, but I did a little exploratory trip in early 2006 and said, well, maybe this could work. And we've been going ever since. What we do during our class is all kinds of fantastic things. But in particular, I immersed you all in the culture of southern Louisiana, a really fantastic part of our country, a place that I am proud to call part of our um, greater American family. And we do that in a bunch of different ways. We do that through um, teaching you guys how to make Louisiana food, how to make uh, New Orleans cuisine, um, like these uh, fried green tomatoes and all kinds of fantastic stuff. When we first went, we were primarily focused on rebuilding, on, on helping um, uh, demolish buildings and rebuild buildings like this one here in the boot tip of Louisiana. Um, uh, way back when. After the first three years, we basically ran out of uh, places to rebuild and people ran out of money, so we converted to um, working on other things. Now we work on a whole variety of projects, uh, including things out in the swamp and things out uh, closer in the built environment. Um, we do that with a whole variety of partners. Sometimes we do that out in the wetlands. Sometimes we do that um, in town. And so this is uh, every night or most nights we'll go out to see different musicians. This is a friend of ours, Urban Mayfield, playing at Snug Harbor. We'll hear jazz, we'll hear Zydeco, we'll hear blues, um, all kinds of great stuff. Um, again, immersing you in the culture. Um, and as we're there, uh, our two main projects are working on wetland restoration to protect the city of New Orleans and installing food gardens in uh, neighborhoods that don't have access to affordable, um, uh, healthy food options. Uh, our main project site is, is a, is a, a long-term partnership with uh, Woodlands Conservancy, which is a nonprofit in New Orleans, uh, in Orleans Parish. We, they don't have parishes there. They have counties in Orleans Parish and the, the area just south of, south of there, Plaquemines Parish. Uh, this is um, our, our bottomland hardwood forest site that we've been restoring for several years. And one of the key things we'll be doing is helping monitor the health of this, how well of our restorations work, how well of our activities uh, played out in this area. We'll be doing that with field surveys and with uh, drones and other things. Um, it's okay if you don't know anything about plants, if you're a major that you haven't done any field work, it's cool. We'll teach you everything you need to know to assess this key part of um, our country. Here's a little uh, overview of one of our food gardens in the boot tip of Louisiana, just to give you a sense of So we're here in Harris, Louisiana, uh, near the boot tip of the mouth of the Mississippi River in southeastern Louisiana in Plaquemines Parish. Um, we can talk about resilience in terms of coastal systems, resilience to uh, hurricanes and coastal disasters in a couple different ways. This landscape used to be more like this, it used to be more wooded, swamp, etc. This is even pretty disturbed over here. But um, for you know several centuries now, people have been coming in and, and um, changing this landscape. And so when we talk about resiliency, we can talk about the infrastructure, but we also need to talk about the people um, aspect of, of stuff here. And so a key aspect of that resilience is can people uh, live a healthy, 
um, uh, rewarding life in these systems. And part of that is making sure people have access to healthy, affordable food. And so we're right here installing um, this year's food garden um, in the on the property of uh, Carol Arsenault, the Arsenault family, and their their uh, kids, and and now happily uh, first grandkid. Um, and so this garden is a huge resource. So fantastic um, soils down here, a part of the natural uh, uh, abundance of this part of our country. This part of our country. Um, and it's fantastic for growing. It's hard to grow because it is so silty. We have to make sure we have some, some amendments and things cut in. But if you do that, it's a fantastic place to grow. As we go up and look um, at this overall landscape, what we see is this system is highly perturbed, right? So the resilience is made that much harder, be it food resilience, um, um, infrastructure resilience, whatever. As we look over um, eastward, we will see uh, a levee. That levee is the Mississippi River, and then just beyond, you'll see the Mississippi River. Uh, could be some ship. Okay, so you can watch all those. You can watch this video, uh, this full video, on my website. But just give you a sense of some of the landscapes we're working in. So uh, when we show up to these places, a lot of times we're the only group that is uh, still coming to help uh, these folks. And in this community here of Virus, it used to be every every plot of land you see used to have a house on it before Katrina. Now it's dwindled uh, considerably, probably about a third of the population, if not less than that, than pre-Katrina. So these are folks that are uh, marginalized, that have been ignored by much of our society and, uh, and are, are, are really uh, clinging to the edges of this part of our country. And it's important to, um, uh, for you all to, to see this, to understand this, and to get a sense of um, what all of our uh, uh, members of our greater American family are dealing with in this time and, uh, and how we can be better um, uh, neighbors and better assistants uh, and, uh, and, and, and really what environmental resilience, environmental justice, and all that stuff actually means on the ground. Okay, so uh, as far as our class, uh, um, the, the trip is a 10-day trip. It's over spring break. It's going to run this year from March 16th to the 26th. You pay 850 bucks. Campus pays the rest. You pay about a third of the trip cost. Campus pays about two-thirds of the trip cost. That's everything. There will be uh, a time or two when I'll let you loose, and you got to buy your own lunch, but pretty much this covers everything. This covers airfare. This covers food, et cetera, uh, and you know, access to, to um, we go, go hear bands play, that kind of good stuff. Um, it's open to everybody across campus. We tend to historically um, mostly take ESRM folks, but but we've we have people every year from all from nursing, sociology, everywhere. So this is open to anyone who's a student at CSUCI. Um, while we're doing things, wetland restoration, um, um, all, all these great projects, um, really the main organizing question is why did things happen the way they did when we talk about uh, Hurricane Katrina, when we talk about the Deepwater Horizon? Why did they happen the way they did? Um, and what has recovery, well, how has the recovery happened? And the recovery that has happened, why has it gone the way it has? So if you are a, 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 a political science major, you can tackle that from a political science perspective. If you are a history major, you can look at um, all kinds of historical context. An ESRM major, you can look at the environmental dimension, dimensions. It's up to you. So this is really a course about um, uh, learning by doing. Unfortunately, we don't have any quote unquote natural disasters anymore. All of our natural disasters, so-called natural disasters, uh, hurricanes, what have you, are greatly complicated by our built environment. And this trip is really going to be about looking at that. So these themes that we learn about in Louisiana, absolutely 100 percent applicable to right what's going on here in Ventura and other parts of our world. Um, we know disasters are growing. How we deal with that is up to us. Um, uh, and when we talk about um, these constraints, these constraints are very real. And again, you can you can choose to explore this however you like. We produce, you will all produce something at the end of the trip, a poster, um, a game, a song, a piece of art, whatever, to explore this. But um, this is also about changing our perspective. So this is normally when we think about, for example, the Gulf of Mexico or the southern part of the U.S., we normally think about this, political boundaries, static boundaries, et cetera. We can talk about the old hurricanes that came through. The last hurricane pre-Katrina that hit New Orleans was Betsy in 65. But this is all of the, this is all the tropical storm tracks 
that came between that 1965 hurricane and the 2005 landfall. So really this area is dominated by these systems. So even if Ventura dodges a bullet, even if New Orleans dodges a bullet, even if New York dodges a bullet from these uh, changing climate conditions, um, just because you dodge the bullet this year doesn't mean our neighbors um, have dodged the bullet. And this is really um, a trip built around understanding this and built around not saying, oh, woe is us or, oh, we're so depressed, but actually um, taking a positive role and helping us be more resilient. So um, uh, we'll talk about things, we'll start off talking about things like wetland loss, et cetera, but really ultimately it's about what you bring to the class and your time and effort and open mind. So I'm looking forward to you coming with us, asking why things have been the way they are, why are things the way they are right now, and would love to have you join us in Louisiana, in New Orleans, and I'd love to see you apply today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, come to my office hours, or reach out to me, and looking forward to, to hearing from everyone um, super soon and to, for you joining us in Louisiana this spring. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.